Welcome back to the garage. Last couple of days I've been working on a project that had me pretty stumped. It's I'm working on a 2013 Chevy Cruze as the 1.4 turbo. And the problem with it was that the cooling fan ran full blast all the time. You turn the key on, you start the engine, fan is on, it's on all the time. And uh, it's my daughter's car. She had put a head gasket in it. And it started this fan thing after she'd done the head gasket. And it had her stumped and it's had me stumped for several days. Like I said, and final solution was uh, interesting. And I'll get to that at the end of the video. But first, I'm going to go through some of the steps because there's multiple reasons for this to happen on this particular car. So let's go out and look under the hood. I'm not going to try to draw this video out and make it long, but I am going to do some uh, explaining on why what does what and why it would stay on. One thing you really need when you're working on a car anymore is some kind of scanner so you can monitor what the engine is doing, what the sensors are doing. Those little scanners that plug into the OBD2 port and Bluetooth to your phone work really well. I'm using HP tuners because I use that for a lot of other things, but some kind of scanner to know what's going on with the computer is super helpful. Another thing is wiring diagrams. It, if you have to dig into the wires, you really need a diagram, and I found an excellent place to get wiring diagrams, and I'll put the link for it down at the bottom. But they had, I could get one set of diagrams for a car for $14, or I could get five different cars for 30 So I'm going to get diagrams for all of my cars because they're just that good. And that helped me a lot diagnosing this. Now let's uh, look down in the engine. You think cooling fan running all the time, you'd think engine coolant temperature, and that's, that's a good deal. And this thing has two different sensors. There is one sensor right there where the flashlight is shining two wire sensor that is your engine coolant temperature sensor and then well, let's see if we can see it right down here along the side of the radiator i can't get a good view of it but there's a wiring bundle that runs across the top of this and goes down in that hole there's another coolant temperature sensor there and that is their radiator coolant temperature and they both have to be reading right or your fans will have trouble and they are the exact same sensor but it does have two of them now if you've got your scanner you can hook that up and you can see what each one is reading to tell if they're out now what i did was i had a trouble code but you also can look up the trouble codes on the scanner it was showing that the radiator sensor uh it had a problem with the circuit. It was still showing pretty much the right temp, but had a problem with the circuit. So I ended up, that wire on it runs all the way down underneath the battery. Right, it runs straight down through there underneath the battery. There's a connector harness there. Then it runs up through the bottom of the fuse box. And then it finally comes around over to here for no particular reason. So I... Uh, ran a bypass on it and ran its wire straight to the computer just like the engine one is. I mean, it literally goes from the engine over to the computer. So I did the same with these wires. And that got rid of the trouble code, but the fan was still on all the time. Another thing you want to check is just to make sure that your cooling system is full of coolant. I mean, if it's low and it's trying to overheat, that'll set your fan off too. Another thing is the relays. This has a lot of relays that run the fan. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one to get your different speeds. Now, one thing you can look on on your scanner is seeing if the computer is calling for the fans to be on. If it's not calling for the fans to be on, then one of these relays may be stuck. And the way I was checking them was I, the fans running, I'd pull the relay out and you could literally feel the relay click because they're a manual relay if it's clicking when you pull it out put it back in it's probably working okay and in the case of this car the computer was calling for full fan speed all the time so it was not a relay that was a problem on this 
another thing that can cause it is down straight below here below that radiator cooling temperature sensor is the AC pressure sensor and if it's malfunctioning uh, reading high pressure in your condenser up front here it will also kick on the cooling fan but in the case of this car it was reading right the air conditioning still worked so it wasn't a high pressure condition so that wasn't it another thing now this would be rare in my opinion is the actual computer have an issue that wasn't the case here either one more thing on these that isn't no it doesn't jump out at you as far as causing the fan to come on is you have a sensor here that measures the air charge temperature going into the engine you've also got the mass airflow sensor over here and it measures temperature there coming in then it goes through the turbo through the intercooler and this measures the temperature and the pressure it's also a boost pressure sensor going into the engine now if that is reading high or incorrect then that will also kick the fans on because your intercooler is in the front here and it's an air-to-air -air intercooler so when your fan is running it'll help cool down the charge but I went in and they'd already tried changing this and it didn't work so then I got to uh, well I was checking for ground wire since the head had been off this engine make sure there wasn't a bad ground because it had multiple uh, trouble codes so I did a lot of work checking grounds and everything everything was hooked up properly because this car has a lot of grounds there there back there and those wiring drive grams I was telling you about show all the grounds too so very handy but what got me going down the right path is I had two different codes one was for the oxygen sensor not reading right which that's not really uncommon to have an oxygen sensor trouble code and then this pressure sensor was reading wrong seemed to be totally unrelated so I was not too worried about the oxygen sensor but I was focusing on this and I was checking the voltages going into the sensor now the way the sensors on these engines work is the computer will send out a 5 volt signal to the sensor and then the sensor has a variable resistor deal in there and that will change the resistance change that voltage and then it also has another wire going back to the computer that's a ground reference wire so it modifies that 5 volt signal if you ever heard the term 0 to 5 volt signal that's what they're talking about in these sensors so it should have 5 volts coming in and this one since it does pressure and temperature had two outputs plus the ground reference well I go in and check for the 5 volt signal and I've got 12 volts going to this sensor and I'm like, well, that is not right at all. So my first thought is melted wire or something to a 12 volt wire, because it is a turbo car, stuff gets really hot. So that's why a lot of this harness is not taped up like it would be factory. So I start peeling the harness off, because I figure it's either a wire there or the five volt regulator in the computer that runs that sensor has popped and i get to following that power wire back and it doesn't run to the computer it runs to a group of wires that's all just 12 volt power wires now i'm thinking the rest of them went over to like the injectors and the coils and it's like this couldn't have been wired up wrong from the factory so i i was kind of stumped there why that was off and then i happened to go in and google the two codes the one for the oxygen sensor and the one for the pressure sensor and up pops a video that I think it was from standard ignition products the people that make a lot of these sensors and evidently this is a fairly common issue on these cars see this plug here it's square see this plug here it's oval shaped they are interchangeable even though they're totally different shape you can take one off and plug it on the other and that's what had happened was the oxygen sensor plug 
was on here and the 12 volt signal I was reading was basically, it was for the heater for the oxygen sensor. Switch those two, fan stays off, everything works perfect. And apparently, like I said, this has happened more than once if somebody else had put a video out. So check all your other stuff first. Well, actually look at this first, especially if somebody has had the engine apart or you've been working on it or anything like that. Make sure these are on right like they are now. Square plug on the oxygen, the oval one on that sensor because that will save you a lot of trouble. But, and I have given my daughter a lot of crap about that because I've spent several days trying to figure this out. But I can't be too hard on her because I am horrible about just ripping a wiring harness out and then figuring out where it goes back. Because normally the plugs don't interchange, they're the right length to go to a certain area. But in this case, they're right in the same neighborhood and they the plugs will interchange. So some engineer needs kicked right in the nuts. Well, that's all for that. I hope that helps somebody. But thanks for watching.